Okay, you guys. <laughs> if Nobody's you didn't on know. Yet. Nobody's on yet. Oh, yeah. We're talking to ourselves right now. But in case anybody's watching this later and we look a little um, frazzle dazzle, it's because we just hosted Facebook Live from my personal Facebook page. Here we're going to start to join everybody minutes, in. Yeah. Um, we apologize. Every other night we have been on our game, and tonight we are not on our game, but we will be. Yeah. This is oh, the ramp heck up. yeah. We're ramping up. We got this thing. Here, let's hear if people are joining us. Not enough a alcohol bit more. yet. Hey, y'all. What's up? Welcome in, friends. Welcome. Thank you for being on time. Sorry we weren't. We'll tell you about that later. Yeah, we'll get into that in just a few <laughs> minutes. Um, hopefully you're getting your station all set. All folks are jumping in because we were late. Um, you've got your cheese tray out in front of you. Hopefully it's come to room temperature. Um, I always like some sort of bubbles palate cleanser. So for me, that's Rambler all the way. Go Austin. Um, John and I are drinking white wine tonight, but you can drink a light red would be great. Actually, a big red would be great. And cider. Um, any beers? I almost felt like beer tonight. But this is what I poured. I love it. I'm excited. We can go through this and then go to beer. And, and just in case there are a lot of you out there who don't drink, John and I just did 40 days dry. So we have those periods. But today is not one of them. We we, we have, while people are still coming in today, we um, I like to do things without having thought them through. I'm impulsive. I'm a Sagittarius. And... We're also trying to keep the business afloat. So fun fact, our team was like, what? But we threw together a cheese 101 in a box. And I was like, sell it, get it going. People are asking us to do these outside of Austin and we want to share the love. And they were like, well, what are we selling? And I'm like, stick the cheese in the box and mail it. And so <laughs> today we had to film all the videos for it, like how to prepare your cheese plate and how to um, do the tasting. Meanwhile, Ellie like ran by without clothes on. We had to start over and it's been that kind of day. It's been that kind of day. For those uh, that uh, have kids, like we, this is the first week that they're back to school. And so we're supposed to have structure in their day and we're supposed to also run our business and also take Anybody care else of out there trying to work so and frazzled. do homeschool? So, so for the, the first five minutes of our uh, tasting tonight can be seen on Kendall's page because we, <laughs> in the last 10 seconds, signed into the wrong account as we were loading. So that's why we're a few minutes late. Also because our children are holding our other devices, rotting their brains out. But whatever we could do, we stuck them in the bedroom, closed the door, gave them our iPhones. They're five and seven, so don't worry, we're not in Snapchat world or anything yet. But um, they are also getting pizza all over the bed. So I just didn't want to give you ever, never, nobody has ever had this illusion about us, but I didn't want to give you the illusion that we have all, if, all of it put together. Because we have none of it put together. Yeah. Well, but we're going to taste some really good cheese Life unscripted, y'all. We've got amazing cheese, uh, amazing meats. Um, we're just really excited to be here. This is... Uh, we are just a few minutes away. We're at 80 viewers so far. We're probably going to hit about 85 here in a few minutes. We sold we'll 150 to tickets to tonight. Um, we know some people will watch this video later after they've gotten a chance to put their kids to bed. So that's the great thing about our Facebook Live videos um, is that you can watch it later this evening at a time that's convenient for you. Yeah. We, we have been asked, why aren't we doing them later? And that's because that 7.30 to 9.30 window is our personal board meeting bath time and we try not to touch that with anything else work related it's, it's sacred time um but that being said if you're still tuning in and love this or want to do some of our other classes our team of educators are probably way better at this than us and somebody they're doing a class right now and those are private small video conferencing links with only 20 people or so and if you want you can have your video on and chat and talk to the hosts and everything so we're doing these virtual classes three different ways one is john and i on facebook live for really big groups um two is with our team in those smaller um groups and you can check out all those classes online we just announced one every single day to give people something to do because we're all bored and cooped up right now but for good reason um and then three you can actually host one of those as a private party so if anybody's needing like a team building or you missed a milestone birthday or an anniversary or want to get a group of friends together, we can actually do these in private settings for you too. So it's 610. I think yeah, we should start this. Like, and we've got a really forgiving group. The comment, they're all pretty uh, <laughs> uh, impressed that we're uh, making fun of ourselves. For Hopefully up so the, much. Um, nobody's going to publicly post the hate mail that we're going to get for messing up. For being <laughs> a few minutes late, but we, we got, uh, 
Oh, look, our kids are already Remember, interrupting. Remember, you want to say hi? Is it something about the iPhone? Is it really ask. important? No, look. Oh, this it's a math my, question. No, this is my, no, this is my school thing. Right oh, here. fantastic! Yeah, do you want to wave? Oh, it is your school thing. In ten minutes, I'll come and get you in ten minutes. Okay. <laughs> so, See, balancing life and and school, y'all. That is our son Everett. He is a cheesemonger. He's been to about uh, twenty cheese plants in his short life so far, and uh, many that no kids are allowed in. Yeah, so. so he might come back later, eat some cheese, and talk about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll he did see. not see that prosciutto, which is uh, his favorite his cured favorite meat, is, is on the plate, and the we world. probably won't get any. So I'm ready to get started. Thank you, guys. <sighs> yeah. Taking a deep breath. Cheers. Oh. Give yourselves a high five for making it, for doing curbside pickup of cheese plates. Cheers yourself if you want. This is just a really great night. It's beautiful here in Austin. Kudos uh, to our team for all this hard work and cutting. So if there, you're the math guy, I'm the words gal. If there were 150 times well, Let's not multiple, do the math. Okay. Lots. They lots. had to cut a lot of meat. They had to cut cheese. a lot of meat and cheese. There's tons. Yeah, yeah. If you're wondering, if you were tuning in and you're like, oh, I just have to watch the Antonellis eat cheese and meat. No, we actually, people all around Austin picked this up today from the 12 to 5 window. Alexa, Sean, be, please be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um, Austinites picked this up between 12 to 5, so there are a lot of people at home enjoying this cheese tree with us. Um, but we did just launch a Cheese 101 in a box, which we're shipping nationwide now, and it comes with a video of us doing the same yeah. thing. So um, feel free to join in that way at some point. So, cheese and charcuterie. Oh, we got some hearts. Woo. Um, yes, you guys can be commenting all along, and we're going to be, if it looks like our eyeballs are scrolling, we have already learned in three nights of doing this, that we need to look to a different computer um, to see comments. So please do ask us any comments. Um, if we say something that's wrong, correct us. Let's all learn together. Um, but really, what are our classes about? They are about coming together, celebrating community. Usually it's around a shared table and we can't do that anymore right now. So it's more important than ever to us in these really isolating times that we are still finding a way to come together. And so that we're not socially distanced, we're just physically distant, um, but socially we're connected. Um, yeah. Yeah. So if you are at home alone, you are not. You are with the Antonellis and all the baggage that that comes with, um, and you're with 150 other people Y'all are awesome. Tonight. This is awesome. I'm so excited to be here. Should we dive in? Uh, you should have received a menu with your cheese plate tonight. We're going to go from the top down through our pairings. Um, the way that the plate is set up, we've got uh, the white, this really beautiful white soft cheese. This is going to be at your 12 o'clock, and we're going to go clockwise around the plate. So our, uh, some of our house rules, try not to eat your plate all at once. If you've already eaten it, I'm so sorry. Uh, we didn't say that three minutes ago. Uh, sometimes we forget. It will be boring, except Kendall and I will be lively for the next hour, so you can still watch. We'll see. I got like 50 minutes in it. Um, stay with us. We'll give you some suggestions on how to eat, how to pair, what you might be tasting. Um, and um, and we'll go clockwise around the plate, top to bottom on the menu. Leave a little bit back from each pairing because we want you to, first of all, end on a bite that you like. Second of all, your palate is going to change over the course of this tasting. Um, and third, we can mix up pairings as we go and see what you like and what you don't like. And something that's super cool is every um, palette is unique to your, your yourself. So it's like kind of like a fingerprint. The old school um, way of thinking was that flavor, well, we got to talk about flavor, yeah. but um, that taste on your tongue had a specific map. And there was a certain area that could taste sweet, certain area could taste salt. Um, so your mouth, your palate can taste five things, sweet, salt, bitter, sour, and umami. Um, and they're actually saying that maybe well, you can taste or, fat. Yeah, yeah, okay, maybe. so anyway, those five things. And there used to be a specific map on where you could taste that on your tongue. And now the new science that's out is that it's different for everybody's tongue and everybody's palate. And so we all taste things differently. So we'll talk you through what we're tasting and what the makers say of these items on the plate. But you may have a completely different experience and we want you to be able to mix and match and choose your own adventure. Plus, if you're gonna drink a white wine and move into a red or a lighter beer and move into a stout or porter, um, That'll be fun to have some to pair back afterwards. Also, when we get to each pairing, we're gonna invite you to taste the cheese in a very specific way. So taste this part first, don't taste this part. So if you can kind of hang with us on that, it'll be great. We tell a little bit more about taste. what is flavor. Flavor, outstanding. And uh, I wanna 
Welcome to the only clean part of our house. <laughs> By the way, this uh, this like three foot window here behind us. Put the us. pillow up. Make it look better. There you go. Fantastic. So There's flavor. like underwear around so and dog. Yeah. If, no. Okay. If your if your tongue picks up taste and your nose picks up aroma, uh, where flavor happens is the combination of those two. When the when the brain picks up all of the sensations coming from whether starting with your finger, the visual cues of what you're looking at, the sound when you're chewing. And then the air rushing through your uh, retronasal, kind of breathing out through your nose. All of these things together create flavor. And so the experiment that we're going to do to show that is on your plate, you should see these corn nuts uh, right in the, uh, in the middle. These are uh, Spanish cuicos. They are lightly fried uh, corn. They are awesome and amazing and a perfect Don't salty snack. Don't eat this snack. if you're allergic. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely <laughs> don't not Don't sue us. That. Don't give out of this. But what I want you to do is I want you to pinch your nose like this. Okay, just don't leave this hanging a long time tonight. All right, we'll go quick. Okay. Pinch your nose, chew, and taste it. Taste salt, maybe some of that umami, maybe a little bitter. And you when can you're breathe like, out of your mouth. Yeah, don't, don't pass out from not breathing. And when you feel like you know what you're tasting, uh, unpinch your nose, and then exhale out. And then oh. all of a sudden you'll pick up popcorn and roasted corn on the grill. Is anybody doing this outside right now? Is anybody sitting outside on this beautiful night I saw eating some our folks, cheese tasting? Jen Rasler is all fresco on this beautiful awesome. awesome evening. So like you might be spe smelling uh, corn on the grill or the flavor of corn on the grill maybe. And that's all happening up in this combination of taste and flavor. Uh, so while you're tasting tonight, make sure you exhale out. And we so it wasn't your palate and your tongue that tasted popcorn. That was actually what came through with your olfactory. So when we're eating these, you want to be eating them mindfully and slowly, breathing out and exhaling. A lot of people who've been to a beer or wine tasting before, and we talked about this last class, they know to look at it visually, take their time, swirl it, smell it. Um, then when they taste it, they do gurgle a little bit, the strapaggio method, and that's to aerate it on I'll your palate. Like Yes, our son is doing his online schooling that right now, so John's going to go log it in. Um, so they know to swirl it on their palate, um, and then when they drink it, you stop, you think about the finish, um, but then they go and they like toothpick the food and just pop it back. So our goal is that you mindfully eat everything on this plate, just as you would at a beer tasting or a wine tasting, um, and that we get to do it and slow down because most importantly, this is a huge labor of love. We're going to talk about all these awesome producers and what they put into it. Some of these products aged out a year or longer um, and all the labor that has gone into making those. And I want you to be able to enjoy that just as much as you would when you're sitting there at that fancy wine tasting. If you have, I feel naked. I feel like I don't have an appendage right here. So <laughs> this is like a, a weird nightmare waking up. Uh, I'm used to being the one who talks all the time, but at least having some eye candy next to me to pour it. Um, so when we get started, we're going to start at 12 o'clock with our bloomy rind cheese. Um, let me see if I've set us up with everything tonight. Usually John and I bounce back. Oh, I know what I wanted to talk about. Charcuterie. So this is perfect pairings, cheese and charcuterie. Another way to say it could what be... What did I miss? I, I was like, I don't know what to do. You're not here, even though I talked the oh, whole time anyway. She is awesome. <laughs> she could do this by herself, but since I'm, a, night. I'm pretty much attached to her all the time, whether you know that or not. Okay, so. we are going to taste, but quickly defining what is charcuterie. So we could just call this cheese and cured meats pairing, um, but charcuterie often gets thrown around incorrectly. Like, Kendall, I want to make a charcuterie plate. What cheeses should I buy? Charcuterie actually specifically refers to meat and the process and preser the process or art of preserving meat, especially when you didn't have refrigeration. So you can do that lots of different ways, air dried and cured, fermented, um, and then different formats, which we're going to talk about. Is it whole muscle? Is it coarse ground? Um, rillettes, pâtés, all of these are different forms of charcuterie, which we'll get into. Um, but specifically, charcuterie actually really refers to meats. Hopefully we don't have any vegetarians out there. But for the record, I'm a recovering vegetarian. Any other former vegetarians out there? There's a lot of people who work in meat. Ben, co-owner of Salt and Time, was vegetarian for years. So for a lot of us, it's just really important about how the animals were treated. Um, and we're going to talk about some of that in tonight's meat eating. So excited. And cheese eating. Yeah, we should have some cheese I know. and meat. Let's do the first one. Kendall I just didn't I want to start without yeah. you. Kendall and I love talking. And so we'll start with that uh, white cheese at the top. Um, we will, uh, the, the structure, we'll talk about the cheese, we'll talk about the meat, eat them in that order, and then pair them together. And 
they, they all go great together and um and you guys can give comments and feedback on what you like the best. So so as we go into eating this one, um, I cut my piece in half with John so we could give you guys more. Um, but these were actually together. So each one of you should have gotten this pretty little um, flower petal. So this cheese comes, you remember those flowers you drew as a kid? I don't know. Six petals. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So these are in the shape of a flower and that's their own spring flowers. Um, so each one of you got a petal, if you will, and it's about the size of hand um, and when you look at it you should be able to see we have too much light in here but there's an inner chalky paste then there's a cream line right next to the rind and then there's the rind and yes we're gonna talk about whether to eat the rind or not it looks like I was trying to wink but I was like an eye twitch okay, yeah keep that... going. <laughs> I okay. love you I love you keep going new content right every time okay so when you get when you start to take a bite of this cheese I want you to first bite this inner chalky paste uh, then get a little bite with that cream line, and then lastly add in the rind, because they're three different flavors, and then do it all at once, so you're getting three different cheeses in one. Yeah. Um, the th inside is going to taste the closest to the milk source, mm -hmm. sort of like a, fr yeah, it's delicious. This is a new cheese on the scene. Um, about uh, two years ago, uh, we finally got introduced at the American Cheese Society to this new cheese. Savencia is a a large French cheese company that invested in this um, uh, cheese maker in Illinois and has really done some wonderful things with creativity, flavor profiles. Um, this is Keep Dreaming. Do you want to talk about what the yeah. spirit that they've sort of brought back? And so Keep Dreaming is from Dorothy's Creamery in Illinois, and Dorothy Demeter was actually the first woman to earn a degree in dairy science from a university or college in the nation, which is super awesome. Her family, um, her dad, she grew up in a cheese making family since 1925. Um, and so this is, was her way to continue the legacy. And then today her nephew and son are the ones still running the operation and the cheese maker's name is Bob. Um, and their goal is to preserve their farm in this cheese. Um, they say it's a taste of terroir, which I'll talk about terroir a little bit later in the evening because I think we have some different examples on here. Um, but it's a taste of their farm and the lands. They source milk from small nearby farms um, outside of Lena, um, which is the area in Illinois. Um, the one thing I wanted you to see is you see this like black line just under the rind. That is not a blue mold. People are like, oh, I don't like blue cheese. It's not blue cheese. This is actually ash. It's a vegetal ash, which is sprinkled on it. Um, that mm. is um, in the French tradition. It's really two look at purposes. That creaminess. Look at look at how creamy that cheese is on the cream line. It's so good. <laughs> so oftentimes, ash is added one just for aesthetics, and then two, it neutralizes the acidity and changes the pH some, um, and so it can make a cheese a little bit more mellow. This style of cheese are in your bloomy rind cheeses. If you look on the back of your menu, you'll actually see our seven styles. Uh, we're not going to go into the seven styles we're tonight. We're getting mad emojis coming off this that cheese. That cheese is yeah, banging. It's so good. Um, we just brought a lot in, and it's new to our shop. Um, and it has a really good price point, for the record. It's just like a, a really good cheese. Yeah. Um, so that ash, what was I talking about? Oh, Ooh. that it's a bloomy rind. And the way that bloom works is it breaks off all the proteins in the cheese and makes it creamy. Yes. You're Wonderful. Well, so I would love to hear uh, from y'all which part you like the best. Oftentimes, people would like fight over whether the inside or the cream line or the rind is the better part of the cheese or all of them together. I always think that if we could figure out a way to bottle the cream line into like a squeeze can, that that would be pretty amazing. And this uh, so cheese has a John was flavor. the one growing up that would just take the easy squeeze oh, bottle. Easy cheese. And, yeah, easy cheese and pour it in his mouth. Um, oh, fun story. Our first ever... What is that day? Not July 4th. April Fool's Day. We did a big display of our perfect pairings and we had e, um, we had Velveeta and Rotel, we had Mrs. Bird's White Bread and American Craft Singles, and then we had Rich Crackers and the Easy Cheese set up as stations. And a lady walked in and goes, this is not the type of cheese shop I thought it was and walked out. And we were like, wait, wait, it's a joke. We call it Velvite yeah. now just to, to live that. We're getting a lot of great feedback on this cheese right okay, now. Okay, so we got to tell you the pairing because before so you um, yeah. eat it all. So this is... Uh, under... I, yeah, you go. All right, sure. 
You got it, my love. I was just going to say, the reason I chose this pairing in a small format hard salami is because that one is so creamy. So we could have done this with like a prosciutto or something, but I wanted something with more texture um, because this one was so runny. So tell them about this one. Well, Alicia is telling me that we should just put this in a can right away. Mm, fair. Um, so Underground Meats um, is mm. a collective in, um, in Madison, Wisconsin, and it's a butcher. Um, and what they, they've they been work operating for a handful of years. And one of our team members, Brad, uh, found them searching um, online, a very small little article, probably around 2012, I would say. And we hustled them. We ha uh, hassled them for years and years and years. People often ask, how do you get your products? This is one of yeah. the ways. We called Hello? and called and called. And they were so little, they weren't yet shipping out of state. Um, but we knew that they were focused on like high quality meats, heritage breeds like Tamworth. We'll talk about that later. Um, they were humanely raised animals, small farms, trying to do good for the environment uh, and create really flavorful products. So we just kept calling, calling, calling. And when with meat, one of the things that matters is um, your national licensing. So oftentimes as a salami producer, you can make, you can sell at a farmer's market direct to consumers, but you can't resell to somebody else who sells. So this is why for all you local folks, you can get salami straight from Salt and Time, but you can't buy Salt and Time salami anywhere, anywhere else. Anywhere else. And that has to do with legal licensing. So we just kept calling them and calling them and calling. Finally, they said, all right, you'll be the first phone call we make when we finally get licenses. And so we were the first company. Perseverance, baby. Yeah, first company that they shipped to out of, the, out of Wisconsin, uh, which is a pretty amazing thing. We've been selling them for about four or five years. Um, and they just make really high quality, um, these dry salamis, um, and the flavors are fun and exciting and unique. And what makes uh, goat salami pretty nice, this is a combination of goat and pork. Um, and so goat is really, this is going to come up with another yeah. one later, goat is really lean actually. Mm -hmm. So the little small addition of pork is to help bind it and keep it together. And this one also mm. has cinnamon and rosemary in it. And I think you can taste that. Yeah. Um, I'm loving this. I'm seeing some house divided, either the rind or the cream line or both. Maybe it so, changes too once you add the salami in. We don't want to start any lover's quarrels. People often ask me, how should I eat this pairing? One and then the next, both at the same time. I really think it's choose your own adventure. But this one to me, I am going to do a little cream. I'm going to use the bread as kind of my cracker. By the way, there is bread on your plate. No. You're going to use the salami as your cracker, yeah. <laughs> not the bread as your cracker. This, I need an interpreter. This is why yeah. we, we work on Let's drink more. No, I'm going to eat this. Yeah. You drink that. Um, so everything just immediately on your bread and eat it because then you're just going to taste yeast and bread and you're not going to Trace, actually taste it. Trace asking, which is the goat salami. It's mm. the one directly to the plated directly to the right. It's a little dry salami. So we're going clockwise, we should, remember? We're going clockwise. It should be right next to that Keep Dreaming. Um, that might be... Tracy, I don't know if you're super young and you, if people just go look at an old school clock that goes around yeah. hands instead well, of digital. You're, you're, yeah. Um, okay, you want me to go yeah. this way? I don't know. Wax I on? Wax, Wax off. off. Yeah. Um, the, the thing that is cool about goat salami, especially at a, uh, in a lot of farmstead producers in, um, in the U.S., um, farmstead producers are raising the animals. Uh, from birth typically, milking and then making cheese. And so part of the dairy industry is that they, um, the mamas have to get pregnant to pr produce milk and they often have babies and those, oh, well, they all have babies. They often have boys. And um, those boys um, will grow, up, will grow to up to become a food supply chain. And so goat meat is the number one meat sold throughout the world. Or the highest consumed meat. Did in the you know world? that? I learned that recently. That's pretty amazing that it's the highest consumed meat is goat meat in the world. So this uh, so ground meats partners with some of the goat raisers to make sure that the, the the young males get raised into the food supply chain, and so uh, they just do a really great job with the the product. We got to visit their facility in I think twenty. 13 for the American Cheese Society conference. When we and had less grays, that's all I can say. I don't have any, well, never mind. I'm like, I'm gonna eat how's more. the angle look right now? Huh? Yeah. All right, let's do the next cheese. Um, so good. While, before we Love move the on, goat we're going to keep moving horizontally, I mean that. horizontally, clockwise. There are things in the middle of your plate. One is this delicious little cup. Um, I wouldn't eat the cup. Inside of it is delicious. These are sweet and tangy mustard seeds. They are made locally. Oh, where, where's the video? 
Um, taste elevated. Lori Krieger is just north of San Antonio in Castroville. I so she makes all her line to meats. It also happens to go really well with cheeses because they're all acidic and pickled in some way, and so it cuts through the, the really rich um, palate coating fattiness that both cheese and meat have. So we definitely needed some pickles tonight. So we call these Texas caviar because they, if you don't like mustard, I'd still give them a try. They're very atypical. Um, I love them. I put these on a grilled cheese sandwich. In fact, our, Ooh, devil I was going to say our award-winning grilled cheese from our restaurant fairground, it, it never won an award besides our own heart. But people were like, what's the secret? And besides good cheese and meat, it was these sweet and tangy mustard seeds. Um, also on your plate are cornichon pickles. Cornichons are seasoned. Um, and then we have some pepidou peppers. And John learned some fun facts about pepidous. Yeah. So, um, well, I was just going to comment. We've got a comment here that if one of the 150 of you also have Hans pills from Drink hops and it. grain next to you, I think that's hops and grains. This seems to make sense. Um, Pair it with the goat salami. You'll love it. Um, so the pepper pepper, one of the things that I was I found out the other day, um, since we've been around in the cheese world, this has been a very prevalent e experience when it comes to a cheese plate. But what I learned was that this was only, this fruit was discovered about 30 years ago. It's a very recent discovery. Um, they found it in South Africa. This, this gentleman found it in South Africa and decided to pickle it in vinegar or simple syrup. So you get this sweet and spicy. Some of you made this batch that we recently got. Some have more seeds than others. So that ha this seed is where the spice is. Not in the spicy, take some of the seeds out. If you're in the spicy. Generally they're not spicy. Not it's overwhelmingly. Yeah, spicy is the wrong word. It's not. But there is a, 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 a warmth spice to it. it. Yeah. Okay, and sorry, we got it oh, correct. Hans because it's Pills Real Ale. We love you, Real Ale. Sorry, y'all. Um, okay, let's do, so those, the there is they're not specifically paired with any of them it's just when you kind of want a palate cleanser or to refreshen your bite go eat something cold and let that acid cut through and then go back and we'll start it again so it's kind of fun between each pairing to go through that yeah um let's do the next cheese yeah I'm so our feeling next good cheese. how's it I have everybody feeling good and loose <laughs> we're getting loose Woo, i don't yeah. know what this shoulder thing is over here but i'm feeling good i'm finally <laughs> stretching <laughs> Okay, so our next cheese is actually in the washed rind category. You will know because when you, the first one had that white skin, this one has the orange reddish Can't, wine rind. There we go, a little bit better. You can still see that white, a little bit of that white mold on it, but that orange reddish rind is often a, um, a brevi bacterium linens or B, what contributed to that. This stuff is known for being your kind of funky, pungent cheeses. Um, that being said, this one is still a pretty mild. Um, so I'd give it a smell. It, it smells like a little bit. I love, I love me some funk and cheese. Um, so you can smell that funk, but this is a mild manner one, and it's a, one of the most famous wash rind cheeses in the whole world. Yeah, Taleggio. It's a name control. I'll talk mm -hmm. about in a second. But Taleggio is from the Lombardy region of Italy, a hard hit area right now in the COVID nineteen pandemic. Um, our thoughts go out to the people that we care about that are there um, living their lives right now in a very intense time. Um, this uh, is uh, near Lake Cuomo. It's um, on the, uh, let's see, eastern side of Lake Cuomo. Uh, Kendall and I got the uh, chance to travel there and visit, but it is a very famous cheese. It's a square cheese, so it comes in a, a very uh, sort of squat but wide square. And what makes that interesting is that uh, that kind of shape is really hard to perfect the aging. So these are actually aged in, in these rectangular boxes in these caves. Um, and it's historically significant, so it's name controlled. And what that means is that the has identified that product as being culturally, economically, and socially important enough that it needs to be protected. This came about at a time when products like Roquefort in France were really important to the economy and producers in other parts of the world started copycatting and calling themselves Roquefort. And you can see in places like Brie, most all of us know Brie as a cheese, uh, but it's Brie de Meaux, um, um, uh, Brie de Melon that are the actual name control products. Those are sort of the gold standards. They're made in a way that is very specific and dialed in. It has to be certain animals and certain um, times of uh, uh, years or depending on the cheese, depending right. on the cheese, certain qualifications. 
Uh, champagne is a great name control product to talk about. And so, so, for instance, with champagne, because I just feel like it's the easiest yeah. example, um, not all sparkling wines are champagne. Yet, for some reason, people always want to say, like, oh, we're having a champagne brunch. And I'm like, girl, it better be champagne if you're going to call it that. Not really. We're not that pretentious. But champagne means a very specific product versus, which is made in that region in France from the Champenois method from certain grapes in a certain way. Secco is from Italy. Cava is from Spain. Um, and then there are just sparkling wines and everything in between. And so each one, Champagne is a name control. And so the reason it was name controlled is it needs to protect that local economy. And so people know every time when they're buying what to expect. And there are certain flavor characteristics that go with the Champagne. All right. Um, hi, Aunt Bibi. My, um, my great, great, no, my great aunt just great got aunt. on. Hi, You're Aunt awesome, Bibi in Arlington. Um, let's do, and then I see some fellow cheese shop. Cheese shop of Fairfield in Connecticut is on, and Zingerman's Creamery is on in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So support your local cheese shops. Let's do. Please. Um, Absolutely. Well, we'll talk about it. Go ahead. Eat the uh, inside of this cheese. It's kind of fudgy. Um, I love the texture. Yeah. This cheese is outstanding. This comes from Chiresa. So as I was saying, this is from right outside of Lake Cuomo. Uh, and we got to visit the facility with our kids in 2017, I was the president of the American Cheese Society at the time. It's the sort of largest international cheese organization. Um, and I was fortunate enough to be on the board for eight, seven years. And as part of that, I was invited to So who was running the shop? And the family and everything else. I mean, who's running my life too? Um, I was invited to speak <laughs> at uh, the Slow Food Cheese Festival in Bra, Italy. It's the largest cheese festival in the world. And part of that trip, we took the kids with us, and we did a, a couple-week trip. As I said on the Facebook Live feed that was before this one accidentally on Kendall's page, um, our kids have been uh, to about 20 different cheese plants in the course of uh, their lives already, and this was one of them. So Chiresa has a 100-year history. Um, the the has, let's see, 1927, almost 100 years. And uh, they started by just being an Afanor of Valsacina, a cheese of that sort of region of Lecco. Um, and now they make cow, goat, sheep, and water buffalo cheeses. Um, this Telegio is one of their uh, most important ones that they're making. Uh, and I remember we got to go and uh, they gave us all these cheeses to joy right afterwards and they're like oh just walk behind the facility there's this gorgeous waterfall go sit and eat cheese there and so we took the kids and sat there also make yogurt do you remember how good that yeah we was? sat i mean we had some we have some like squirrely kids who move around a lot so i was a little Absolutely. nervous they're going to jump in john's going to try to show oh, you yeah. a picture here's a picture of them this is them in the, the cheese plan all dressed up a couple years ago let's see if they're aren't they cuties they're so cute Oh my gosh, you're such a proud papa. Uh, he, he wears those pants in this relationship. I mean, I think they're cute, but they're also kind of stinky and a lot of work. Okay, so to eat the rind or not, um, we like to say a couple puns because it helps you remember, but a rind is a terrible thing to waste. No rind left behind or be kind to your rind. I would definitely give it a bite. If you like it, eat it. If you don't, you don't have to, um, but give it a try. And I really enjoy this rind. And we have paired this in this Italian tradition with a prosciutto. That being oh, said, yes. this is a special prosciutto. This is made in Iowa. This is an award-winning, one of our first um, American domestic stick prosciuttos. Stick your nose. Stick your nose right in it. Okay, girl. you're going to look like Hannibal Lecter. That's, I was like a little okay. bit freaky. <laughs> that, that's fair. I guess that's <laughs> fine. I'm just saying. It smells um, so good. So this is a prosciutto americano from Herb and Kathy Eckhouse in Iowa. Again, it has won numerous awards. Um, this is heritage breed Berkshire pork. Um, something that I love about when we're talking about heritage breeds and our producers is it might seem a little bit odd, like, so wait, you value the breed, so you're going to eat it. Um, but actually by creating a demand for it, um, it like where should help bring back these heritage breeds, which were in danger of going extinct in the area. And so a lot of the producers around them were not producing, um, or raising these heritage breeds, but now that they've shown that there's a demand and a quality, it has brought them back so that they're not as in danger of going extinct. Um, so that's part of what a heritage breed means. This prosciutto is aged 10 to 12 months. Um, this is their kind of everyday 
prosciutto. They have yeah. different lines all the way around. Um, it's not very gamey. It's more sweet and creamy and delicate. Um, what do you think about it? Well, so what's really fascinating mm -hmm. about products like this, so Taleggio, as I said, is name controlled. It needs to be made in a certain region. You can emulate the flavors and such in other parts of the world, but it can be difficult because the, the seasons are different, the temperature fluctuations are different, the aging environments are different. So producers try to replicate that. Um, mm -hmm. What's pretty cool about prosciutto, prosciutto is, um, and it's an amazing product. I'll probably get some of this wrong. I'm picturing a tour that I did back in Italy in 2017, a different trip that we I got to take. and but. It follows the season. So if you think of before modern refrigeration, you know, you'd, they'd harvest the animals at like a time like September. It would be salt. The legs would be um, trimmed, salted, protected, and then put into aging. So it would be somewhat warm, but not too warm. And then it would go into winter. And these facilities are up in the mountains with these giant windows where they could capture the breeze, the air flowing through, and... Um, kind of taking out the moisture out of these legs. So different and stages of fermentation. It would go, it? yeah, then spring would come, then summer. So all these different uh, uh, temperatures and humidities and, and airflow. And what Herb and Kathy have done in Iowa is replicate those seasons in different chambers. stages. Their chambers are so one, you walk in, it feels like you're in a hurricane. The, wind, the airflow is so intense. Another one is dry and hot. And so... It's just an amazing thing that they'd be able to uh, create this. Yes. Um, Ed, I'm sorry that Abby ate all of your Easy Tiger Baguette. Do Dor, I love that this Telegio is just the right funky for you. Um, Rob, my son can eat a pound of prosciutto americano in one sitting. Mm -hmm. um, so just catching up on a few little things there. Mm -hmm. Prosciutto so comes good. from the hind leg of a pig. Spalaccia um, is also delicious, and that's the front shoulder leg, um, if you've ever seen that. And LaQuercia does some spalaccia as well. Um, and they are hormone-free, no nitrates, nitrites um, added to it. Um, I think that's Yeah, the and they it. also do acorn additions. So those of you that have heard about the abetico hams in Spain uh, that eat mostly acorns, oak acorns, the reason why LaQuercia is called La Quercia. Their emblem is an oak tree, is because of that spirit of the the idea that Iowa has some of the same um, environmental characteristics as the places in the world that make these famous hams. So they also do an acorn edition. We also just finished selling a whey fed edition from Andy Hatch. Oh and my god, that next, also amazing. Next year when that's in, that's just a special during the, the uh, winter and fall. It's so good. So. Come and try some different things. But that's a really fun pairing. I love the textures. I wanted. To, I wrote down this quote because I love it from Urban Kathy. So sorry that I'm going to look and read it. But we believe the food we eat can delight us each day. We strive to offer a memorable eating experience, one that causes you to just stop and savor the moment. And I love that. That's what we're all about. And tonight, connecting, um, bringing together community through cheese and through charcuterie, really alliteration there, all those C's. Um, but yes, the power that is universal and transcends all cultures of uh, being able to come together over a shared plate and a shared meal, even with us virtually, is pretty powerful to me. So thanks for, I'm getting set up. Mm. Okay, next cheese. That is so good. All right, next cheese. Um, also, if you haven't noticed, this is going to be a little bit of an ode to the Midwest, which is where we have a lot of our, our pork producers um, yep. and meat producers. So, um, you cheese. I'm so happy right now. That was so good. Um, the cheese. All right. Well, let me look at what we got. I jumped ahead and ate. Fantastic. So we have manchego. This is El Chigal. Uh This is a six-month to eight-month manchego. It's still fairly semi-soft and pliable. If you look on the rind, you can see it's got this uh, very, um, well, it doesn't show up quite well, but this uh, basket, ha weave. basket weave hatch um, pattern. This is a very classic manchego identifier. You'll see other cheeses from that region, Zamorano, um, Campo de Montalban, a few others that share this. But that's something you look for of the uh, Manchegos. It's uh, another uh, uh, name controlled, controlled cheese. And uh, this comes from the Pueblo de Montalban, which is a small little town just uh, west of Toledo um, from the Coquera family. And so 
we got uh, w when we took our trip to Spain. One of our goals in life is to visit all of the Purdue. Nice work. All of the Purdue. See, I talk while she eats. Just keep going. I'll go. Um, one of our goals is to visit all of the producers that we work with um, in an effort that one we can. Um, make sure that the quality, the standards are exactly what we expect them to be so that our customers can feel very confident that they're gonna get the experience that they deserve. And then on the other side, Kendall and I find ourselves, even from the very beginning, we're better storytellers than we are producers. And so we wanna make sure that the producers that trust us with their product can trust that we're telling the right story and provide the right experience to our customers because we're all part of one family. And if we're doing either one of those things wrong, not not giving you guys the experience that you deserve and not providing the story how the producers want, it can really come off as uh, disingenuous and, and really negatively impact uh, the producers. And pretentious, about and pretentious, if you can't tell. So, so we say we do three things really well, service, smiles, and storytelling. Um, let us know if we fail you on one of those tonight. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, uh, she's, if you've read Don Quixote, it's a bunch of times. Um, it comes from the La Mancha region of Spain, the, uh, just the, around Madrid area. And it, this is um, where sheep actually thrive. And so we're looking at a 100% sheep's milk cheese, very luscious, very rich. Um, pretty much people love manchego. It's one of the, if, if you've had artisanal, it's typically one of the, first cheeses that you fall in love with? I would say it's also one of the most requested cheeses mm -hmm. in our shop as people walk in and say, oh, I'd like a Manchego. Um, fun bit of news on this, they're not all Manchegos are created equally, even though they all have to meet certain qualifications. So this is a six month older version as well, um, which will be a little bit drier. Um, each one has different flavor profiles and there's multiple producers. And so um, for instance, what we sell in our shop is different from what you're gonna get your average grocery store. Um, so just whenever you're comparing something at um, a bulk like Costco or Sam's, which is also great, there's a time and place for each one, but um, comparing apples to apples. Mm. So we are pairing, um, oh, I heard a great oh. descriptor, tire track, and you're right, the rind does look like tire tracks, as he's about to show pictures again. Are you getting out the family? Heck yeah. <laughs> what? John made these books for us, which is great. I am just not that mom, like there's not even, you guys, we, I never made a birth book for my daughter, Elia. Don't tell her, there's like right. not a picture of her in the house, except these books, so this like, is like our way to do it. Th this town that they operate in has like a population of eight people. But, okay, show them. Look, so here's, this is uh, Corquera family, uh, the owner, right there in the middle with us and the kids. You can see all the stacks of cheeses aging in the bins, they can flip them once a week during the life of the eight months. It's just a pretty amazing, they took us in, they took the kids in. They're just really amazing people. All right. Yeah, now you can go. Also, sheep's milk cheese, we've done a cow, we've done two cow. Cow are known for like buttery, grassiness. Sheep's milk is known for being rich and nutty. Um, sometimes that lanolin texture, that like um, velvety, uh, in a good way, oil um, is delicious. Okay, so I paired that tonight yes. um, with Stagberry. So Stagberry is from Smoking Goose out of Indiana. The name Stagberry comes because it's made of both elk meat, so that's the stag, and then blueberries that have been macerated in a mead. Um, so this is like a really, they say that they're, um, they're a butcher shop, they're um, a little restaurant, but they say that they are where old world craft meets new world innovation. And so you can tell that in this. It does have a little bit of pork in it, again, as a binder because elk is um, so lean. Um, mm. So it's got those macerated blueberries in uh, uh, mead. Um, this um, company is a Good Food Award winner. They also do hormone-free, um, they say, um, like La Quercia, animals that like to live like animals. Um, no gestation pins. Uh, that's my hickamy pins. No gestation pens. You did great. Okay. You did great. Okay. All right. I love you. <laughs> Amazing. Um, what else? Awesome. Um, uh, we, one of the fun things is about, I, eat it while you talk. I would say in 2015, so they were a new company. We were still a new company. Our December order, they sent, mm. they shipped down. There was a little a card on the top of the first of like seven boxes that we ordered and it just said wow thank you this is our biggest order ever thank you now 
you know, distributor of theirs very much since the beginning, um, selling all their products. So we called regularly too. And one time when we called, they said, I was like, when are you going to get your certification to sell across state lines? And one time they just said, and we called once a year and they're like, we got it. And so we, yeah, we were one of the first people to be able to um, distribute and represent them outside of their state. And I forgot, this is a love story um, between Chris and Molly, who out of college started a butcher shop um, in 2007, and then which turned into Smoking Goose in 2011. So, love story to know a love story. Mm. Yes, honey? Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm being summoned. Do you want to handle it? Yeah. All right. Okay, you keep, wait, then, where are we at? Jenny asked me a question about Manchego, so I can okay. answer that while I swallow. So Jenny asked, what are the different flavor profiles? Since we mentioned that there's multiple ages of Manchego. So in our uh, Cheese 101 type class, we talk about the difference between semi-soft, firm, and hard. Mm. And what we're really talking about is moisture content and time. And the more time a cheese has, the more likely the protein chains will break down into amino acids. So as it ages, it actually gets more flavor, develops more flavor. So a young manchego that's say three months, uh, four months, will be more just sort of butter notes. Um, you'll start to develop maybe grass tones, uh, some herbal notes, um, and maybe a hint of nut, but not much yet in like a five month manchego. As you move into the 12 month manchego, you get really deep nuttiness. You're gonna get some of the roasted note notes. What's up? You're giggling. I love you. You're doing great. I'm just laughing that Alexa has commercials right oh, now. Excuse Alexa, us. This is clearly not a high produced. None um, of us would have machine. known unless you. And somebody about said it. that we're cute, and when they grow up, they want to be us. Oh, you're awesome. <laughs> so hopefully that answers your question, Jenny. I I am dunking mine in the sweet and tangy mustard seeds. Clearly, I'm telling you, I love those sweet and tangy mustard seeds. They'd be good on ice cream. All right. Mm. Let's do, um, and that last um, salami was pretty toothsome. The other cool thing, um, ooh, let's talk about what is salumi. Salumi is specifically an Italian word that refers to cured meats um, that are often pork. The word salami with an I or salame with an E, salami with an E is a singular, salami with an I is plural, a more general term that refers to um, a small format cured air dried meat um, which could be made of beef or pork. So the more you know. I have to look at which one is the I and which one is the E um, because beyond taking my high school Italian I don't remember those that well. Um, let's go on to the next one because we're getting close to some people's bedtime. That's fantastic. Oh yeah our bedtime. Oh sorry I'm like move on but yeah this is uh, if you've watched the other two Facebook videos this works out really well. Go, don't go, go, don't go. Um, no, no, no. You don't think about just um, cutting it like so a long stick. You don't have to just cut it like this. A great way to eat these, of any of these uh, meats, is to buy a chunk and then cut it in cubes, in salad. Or um, So there's a lot of different ways to eat it, and it's going to taste differently if you cut it thicker, if you cut it thinner. Um, if it's meant to be a bite or something that goes across your tongue. So just think of that and play text whenever you're buying salami in a new way because um, it's just really fun that way. So, and the, I guess that's a great segue into saying just simply, if these salamis, our team is elected to take the casing off of them, um, that's an optional choice. Some, some producers say yes, some producers say no. And so you can... When you buy a stick of salami like this, the longer you keep the casing on, the longer the life in the shelf life. And so oftentimes you just want to peel it slowly back as you go, slice what you need, eat what you want, and then peel back more and go. And, so, and most casings and artisanal salami or handmade smaller producer salamis are edible. And in fact, they love you to eat it with it because it's a taste of their aging environments and the specific molds and spores that they've gotten to grow on, which has turned that fermented that salami into what it's supposed to be. So cheese. Yeah, well in the middle of a plate you also have cornichons. Did you take uh we and, did the cornichons and onions? No, save the onion for my copa bite. Okay. We'll eat save it for the next part. Okay. All right. Cheese. We're moving this, to our first goat's milk cheese. This is Eleven Brothers. This is an awesome cheese from Boston Post Dairy. 
This is a cheese from basically the northernmost part of Vermont, right on the Canadian border, um, is Boston Post Dairy. Uh, this is a family that they, the mom and dad, they have 15 children that are now adult children, but they have 15 children, 11 of which are boys. The, let's see if I can get this right. The parents and the three daughters all invested and bought Boston Post Dairy in 2007. So they named this cheese 11 Brothers in honor of their 11 brothers, which is amazing. Um, it's 100% goat's milk. It's won many of awards. We've been um, selling a lot of Boston Post for the last six years. Uh, great texture on it. Um, the Boston, the reason it's called Boston Post Dairy is that the Bo old Boston Post Stagecoach Road runs straight through the farm. Um, and so that's why, that's why it's called that. So it's a historically significant farm. They've been making these cheeses since 2007, I think. And um, I just think it's a fantastic goat's milk example. If you look at the coloring uh, of it, you see it's mostly uh, uh, like a bright white color. Do I look like Vanna White? Uh-huh. You look great. <laughs> I was uh -huh. uh-huh. Yeah, enthusiastic. Bright white. Because goats can process the beta carotenes in grass, whereas cows can can't and sheep can't either so when you see a bright white cheese that's aged out it's your visual cue that it's most likely a goat's milk cheese um if it's a little bit ivory it's probably sheep's milk and then the more color that it might be cow's milk um a lot of that has to do with being grass-fed or not as well on how much color the cow's milk cheese will have hey jay welcome to the group i wonder if you have a cheese plate or not you'll have to join us next time cilantro support them local Fantastic company. Amazing Okay, company. goat's milk cheeses. Sheep's milk are rich and nutty. Goat's milk is known for this kind of tangy minerality. Also, when it ages out, it can sometimes take on a little bit of a sweet note. Mm -hmm. And so I do get that in this. And I paired this tonight also with Smoking Goose. I didn't mean to replicate a producer, but hey, I'm not sleeping a lot. When the fla lot. flavors make sense, they make sense, yeah. right? So this is our, oh no, actually we, our prosciutto was, and I forgot to talk about it. If we look at our salamis, you can tell that I take all the meat and it's coarse ground. Actually, these are pretty finely ground and packed into a small salami. We also have some larger coarse ground salamis, which come in like a bigger format. And then this is whole muscle cured. So it means like the prosciutto, the leg that John was saying, or copa, which is the pork collar or upper shoulder. Um, they cure the whole piece of it. And so it's a whole muscle. And these are some of my favorites. They're just really delicate. They sit right across your palate. Um, this one again from Smoking Goose. This one has won a Good Food Awards. The Good Food Awards, our Good Food Foundation, is based out of California. We're members of the Merchants Collaborative. Um, and we are all committed to serving food or making um, that is tasty, responsible, and authentic. And those are a lot of buzzwords, but they have definitions about what that means in each category. So they have cheese and meats and beer and fish and pantry and jams and honeys. So this has been, this in 2019 won a Good Food Award. Um, it is seasoned with um, pimenton, um, cayenne, garlic, and chili pepper, but all those are just rubbed on the on outside. The outside. But so, so you can see those muscle, muscle tissues and, and fiber with that fat that goes through it. And yes, um, the fat is edible. Some people get so scared good. of it and don't want to eat it, but a lot of the flavor is as well. Jay, if you're still on, would you tell us if you guys are still open? for takeout and delivery at this point. I'd love love to know for a delivery night tomorrow. Um, I hear some send me copa. Oh, we'll talk about white cheddar in just a minute. So um, one of the um, things about flavor, like mm, so good. even Kendall said it's uh, this flavor, flavorings are rubbed on the outside of the meat. The same thing goes for cheese. You've got cheeses that are rubbed in herbs and spices and things. But what you think is that the fat is actually a... Uh, easily absorbs those aromas so they that flavor basically kind of moves onto the inside of, of the product and it's pretty amazing so you could avoid the rind on this and still experience some of those flavors um this is the one where john already ate it but if you don't mind trying you all have a small piece of a balsamic soaked chipoline onion and i thought with the salt and that delicious delicate fattiness of the copa that I would love to put it with this half of a little chipoline onion. So give it a whirl if you want to give it a try. I got like a little bit mm. left. I killed it, y'all. Did you win? 
Yeah, I mean, I know when I don't kill it and that I killed it in my personal palette. Um, a quick jump back, somebody said, what about white cheddar? Oftentimes the coloring in cheeses, oh, this would be a good one to talk Ooh, about. Well, it. yeah, segment. Actually comes from the addition of annatto. And annatto is a natural food-based dye. But if you have a cheddar, and we carry a cheddar from Widmers, who um, they gifted us for see our age 10 we just turned 10 years old y'all that's like a hundred and entrepreneur years we're taking it he sent us for free 10-year cheddar which we got to give out in the shop but he has the exact same 10-year cheddar in a white block and an orange block um while some people say they can taste a difference the majority of people cannot um i'm a believer in that you cannot and that it's mental um but i want to be with somebody else's palate Nato um has no taste to it so it's merely to add color um, to the cheese and people do it it goes back to a couple reasons why one um, it said that adding color hid the defects of um, potentially bad milk or something that did good and or two that it in consumers minds made it flavorful um, and oftentimes it hi proby and oftentimes it mimics um, a grass-fed cheese, because like I said earlier, if cows are out to pasture, they're gonna have a more yellow hued cheese. So it's trying to mimic and show that it's really flavorful. But, so white cheddar, orange cheddar, same thing, one just has a natural-based food dye added into it, which this next cheese actually uh, has. Yeah, so this is um, from Raleigh Cheese House, Raleigh Cheese House in Wisconsin. And this is, again, a fourth generation cheesemaker, Chris. Mm, um, you guys, cheese is banging tonight. They've been making cheese since the uh, 1920s. Um, Tastes like they've bacon. Been, they've been in the dairy industry. <laughs> yeah, you're feeling good. I'm sorry, I'm I am good. feeling good. Pour some more wine. This is our second cheese tasting of the day, and we drank during both of them. And so it's is. And again, you know, being dry for 40 days. And our, I'm sure our kids will put themselves to bed tonight. No big deal. No big deal. Um, so Chris Raleigh, he is one of the, the gentlemen of the cheese industry. Um, a couple of years ago, they won Best of Show uh, at the American Cheese Society for their Cheese Little Mountain, and he just wept and wept. And just he's been doing this. His family has been doing it for four generations, making consistent, really good cheese. And this is sort of an American original. Um, what he's got here, he's it's uh, a, sort of an American style cheese with uh, blueing in it. They've pierced. They've added. Uh, penicillium roqueforti into the mm. cheese and then pierced it. This is an aerobic mold. So when the oxygen um, enters the, the veins that they punctured the cheese with, that mold will grow. And that very delicate. It's very delicate, right? Wouldn't you say on this I'm wheel? just eating and not listening. All right, fair enough. I love oh, it. Oh, yeah. If you're scared of bloom, still eat this. Mm -hmm. Like, So this is a fun one because we only had five cheeses tonight. We like to always put a blue cheese on when we have seven cheeses. Mm. But because we only had five, I know blue can be that being said if you're scared of blue cheese still try this it eats more like a cheddar than it does like a blue cheese um so it's just a fun one to include it it doesn't mm. taste like blue at all it tastes like a cheddar cave on it a little yeah. more earthiness well, and that's what i was going to get to is they also add it like gives it a natural rind so this is a cave aged cheese look at that beautiful natural rind. oh my gosh it's gorgeous you can eat you can eat this it looks like dirt smells like dirt tastes like dirt but that could be really soil. soil. We'll Fancy. say soil. Fancy. We like dirt. <laughs> that could be amazing with the right beverage. Right? If you that flavor profile can bring out the uh, minerality of a Sauvignon Blanc, or it could push forward some of the earthy notes of a Pinot Noir from like Washington or something. Um, but this cheese is just absolutely outstanding. Again, yay. The Green. Eileen, who doesn't really like blue cheese, we love hearing that. That you're like, mm -hmm. I don't like blue, but this is fantastic. It's just a good example of how many of us get used to this is what always blue cheese means, or this is always what a goat cheese crumble means. And it's because that's what we see. Every salad has this version of a goat cheese crumble, every salad or something has this blue cheese. And when you go to a specialty artisan cheese shop like ours, whenever um, we are open for curbside and Collins, but you can't walk in. However, if you do a virtual cheesemonger appointment, we can show you all the way through the case. And so the point is we have like 10 different blue cheeses and they're all so different. And we're gonna talk you through that and say flavor a little bit. Do you want it smack you in the face or do you want more creamy and subtle? And that's what's amazing about cheese is it's just milk, 
salt, rennet, and thyme. That's it. And all of these different things come out of the amazing. So we'd love to take you through the rainbow of cheese. I, what are you I, giggling I, at? I, Alicia said it tastes like a, a bean and cheese burrito. Did nobody Perfect. got bacon right at first? Now I don't know if I got bacon. I got to eat it again. But when you first said it, I was bacon. So. Oh, you so know what? It. it was against the sausage we're about to eat. So I'm going to tell you about the sausage. Let's do the sausage. All right. My love. This, um, I'm sorry, did not print on your menu. So this is your which that sounds disgusting. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> but this is actually a Texas sausage um, made at La Villa Ranch. It's it with a little bit of pork. Again, quail is super lean, so it's quail, pork, and jalapeno. Um, they, it, the difference in sausage and salumi, sausage is a cooked product, so this meat has been cooked um, and then turned into um, this format. So that's why a lot of um, sausage texture when you think of summer sausage. Um, versus an air cured, um, dried in a cellar um, salami. Um, let's give it a go and, and pair them together and see what you think. Got a little jalapeno in it. Got a little warmth to oh, it. Oh yeah, I tasted the bacon because the cheese was against this. That's fine. They Smells are great. It's a they, they, are, they are a working cattle ranch. They also train polo so ponies. That's a good bite right there. Look at that. Mm. Do you want it or can I? Have well, it? if you do it, we're both gonna have our mouths full and nobody can talk. So. <laughs> I will continue talking. I think I haven't gotten a taste of pairing. What does everybody think? We're getting. Oh, I got a, a shout out for Rambler. Great, great call. But um, uh, a couple also people. A good friend. Hi, Paul. So we, we've got some uh, younger generations coming. Jenny said that she's got her son with her. They also said that she, uh, Jen said the cheese tastes like mac and cheese. Mm. I'm down with that. That would be the best macaroni and cheese ever. If you just grated this and melted it into some milk or cream. Add a little espalette pepper on the top. That'd be fantastic. All right, guys. What'd so, you get? Since you just did the pairing, I haven't gotten to do it yet. You know, by, by five, I'm like, I got awesomeness. Do I have to, like, really assess it? Okay. I told y'all earlier, assess the early one we're just eating. Um, no, I got a lot of what our guests are saying. Um, quail sausage. Yeah, the quail sausage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get... Um, that I'm getting that jalapeno more than I have when I've tried in the past. So apologies if you don't I see a little bit more of that in it. But if you go back to the cheese, you'll get more of the creaminess with it. And so that'll palate coat to take out a little bit of that um, jalapeno. Mm. I would now say mix and match. Although you can see we did a bad job. I've eaten most of mine. But choose oh, your I own forgot. adventure. Yeah, you failed, honey. Um, That's all right. Choose your own this adventure. Is what I wanted. So if you have any pepidou mm. left, stuffing the Dorothy's into the pepidou, wrapping it in speck or prosciutto is an absolute favorite bite. Also makes for really cool little appetizers. I'm going to go Brothers, pepidou, and copa. Okay, you go boy. That means yeah. you're a while, so I'm going to be talking. Um, do you want to talk about our core principles? Yeah, let's do it. And so as we wind down, just super, super thank you for joining us tonight. It has been an emotional week. I'm sure it has for us. I'm sure it has been for all of you as well. Life is not normal. And we know yet that we are still super privileged and it's really not normal for a lot of people. And so our thoughts and prayers are with them. And in addition to our thoughts and prayers, it's important that we keep doing our physical distancing. But as two survivors of depression, we feel like it's also really important that we stay connected and socially together. So thank you for joining us tonight. Alexa, I'm in a moment. <laughs> she, doesn't she doesn't know, know that, that. Sorry. Um, I was so, going to turn her off while you're finishing. No, no, stay here. I got it. Um, so it's important to us that we are together and that you're sharing this night with us. And we can't believe that people are with us and that we get to do this with a living. And so we just wanted to close out, um, as has accidentally become tradition, with telling you about our core purples and what you're supporting when you support us. So um, our mission is do good, eat good. Um, we talked about that. It means we source products from folks who make their foods in a way that's great for the planet, their animals, their teams, and delicious for us. And then in turn, you can eat. And no, then in I'm turn, when you support us, we get to do that same cycle and take care of our teams and our community as well. Looking at me so lovingly. I love, love him. Um, high five your neighbor or high five us if you can't. Um, our first core principle is passion with purpose. We spend more hours generally working than we do anything else. And so we believe you should love what you do. And it doesn't mean you have to quit your jobs on your honeymoon to open a cheese shop. On our honeymoon, John said I quit my job. It doesn't mean you have to do that. It does mean hopefully in some way, shape, or form that you can 
find joy in what you do. Um, and the purpose part is pretty important. It means your impact. Is it, does somebody care about what you do and why you do it? So passion with purpose. For us, our personal um, purpose is to spread joy, and it just so happens that we get to do so through cheese. And so when we link that in our shop, it's that we get to tell the story of artisanal producers, um, linking consumers to producers, but really we just wanna make people happy and we get to do that through these awesome cheese bites and your little heart emojis. And hopefully we've gotten some good happy dances on the other side. If you're in the cheese shop, we're gonna give you samples until we see you wiggle in some way. So we hope you're wiggling. Um, next step, be true to yourself and to others. For us, that's our integrity. It means never lying. It means not faking it. If I don't know something, we're all, Every time we learn, it tells us that we have so much more to learn, despite being certified cheese professionals, and we love being students of life. Um, but it also means that people get to show up in our shop, whatever is the true expression of themselves. Um, and we want people to live that and be true to themselves. Um, third is um, family first and then business. And for us, that means however people define family, whether it's their dogs, mine's barking outside. If your dog is in here enjoying your cheese plate with you, that works. Um, but we all um, go to work or try to make a living so we can pay, put food in our mouths, a roof over our head, and pay for our medical bills for us and the people that we love. Um, and we wanna make sure that we always keep that in perspective in our business with everybody that comes into contact with our business. Um, then it's, what did I miss? Be a juggernaut of awesome. Y'all, it's not good enough to just be awesome because you can be awesome alone at home doing whatever you're doing. But if you're a juggernaut of awesome, it's a, you're an overwhelming force. It's about leaving a positive wake. We believe that every single time we come into interaction with you, we're either giving you energy or we're zapping it. And we dang sure hope that the Antonelli team and us, that we are always giving you energy. So thank you for that tonight. And last but not least, it is to improve every day. We know we know we're not perfect we just own right all of that but if there's a way we could have made this better for you besides you know getting on at six and posting to our professional page and not our personal page yeah, we got <laughs> and not having on. children run to the screen um, these are our messy and perfect lives but if there's a way that we could improve this then we would love to do that for you um and we welcome the chance to get up and be a better version of ourselves every day so with that austin we thank you for connecting with us tonight for building community um, and doing it through cheese. So here is our cheers to you and whatever you're drinking, whatever you're doing, you are not alone. You are with the Antonelli's with team us. and we appreciate you. And if anybody needs a distraction, we'll be doing this twice a week for the next, well, until. On Monday we're doing cheeses of the globe and our goal is to not, we're trying not to repeat anything or take one of our awesome team member classes. But this group seemed to love all these cheeses. By the I way, they I, would like, do the same I ended on the again. high and then you like brought it back down. Right. We got it. Y'all are amazing. We Yay! think you're going have an awesome night. Last but not least, I will be going back to your questions if we didn't get to your questions tonight, and I will be answering them in my opinion. So thank you, guys. We have you. Stay safe out there. Share your community. Support your restaurant producers when you can, um, and be good to yourself. Good night, y'all.